I'm Sam. I'm Adam. And you're listening to episode uh, 20 something of the PM Metal Guide podcast. You gotta figure that out, dude. You gotta get on top of your shit. You introduce it every time and you never know the episode. Do you, you don't even. Uh, take a guess. Take a wild guess. 26. Yeah, that's exactly correct. So. Wow. <laughs> Maybe I'm just good. I'm just psychic, bro. Clearly. I tapped into the Matrix. I'm like Keanu Reeves in the 2006 or t- 1996 movie Johnny Hacker or dude, whatever. Dude, there is. An upcoming Matrix Four. Matrix Four is in production. That's a fact. That is true. Yeah, I know. Does anyone want this made? No. Like, Matrix Two is probably one of the worst movies I've ever seen, and Matrix Three is somehow worse. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, what? Uh, Matrix what 4. is it? What's like this super base cinephile opinion that Matrix Two is actually the best Matrix I, movie? I, I think that is part of. I, I think it has to do with concept. I really don't know. I haven't seen Matrix 2 and 3 in a long, long time, and I hope I never do again. Um, yeah, isn't it Matrix Reloaded and Matrix Resurrection? Uh, I think it's Revelations. I could be wrong. Revolution. Revolution, yes. Yes, Revolution. Bro. Revolutions! Bro. Bro. Neo is a Jesus metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Jesus metaphors. Today we're talking about Damnation by Opeth. Whoa, that's crazy. It's our Our seventh studio album. Yeah, our seventh stop on everyone's favorite, the Opethacy, the one that totally, totally gets us views on our podcast. We love that. Oh yeah, it was a very, very lucrative business decision to embark on this journey. Uh, wholeheartedly, we're, we're, we're we definitely six we, views an episode. We definitely have not lost listeners from this series, not one bit. Um, it's almost like if you're not a fan of Opeth, he's probably not <laughs> that interested. No Anywho, Adam, what have you been listening to? <gasps> do God's pee. Come on, like. Uh, do you mean G underscore D's P? It's God's pee. It's go- it's God's pee. Yeah, Fantano. I'm not gonna lie, this album is not a seven. Yeah, this it's album like a is strong not a, eight, light nine. Yeah, this album. There's no way in hell this album is a seven. It is easily the best Godspeed since Alleluia, and arguably better. Uh, and even he says it's better than Alleluia. Uh, yeah, right. And what like, did Tenor give Alleluia? I don't. I don't. I don't know. Clearly, clearly not. Clearly, like a six. I, th- that album's not a six. Are you kidding? Yeah, I guess Fantana just just hates GYBC. And I don't know. I think his uh, you can you can read the review that we posted yesterday on the blog. Of course, pmmetalguide.blogspot.com. Wait, do we still do reviews? I thought we were just a podcast now. No, we are not just a podcast now. We do have a weekly review that comes out the day before these. Uh, but regardless, this album's great, and I don't care what Fantano says. He's a ding dong and doesn't like good music. Pog. <laughs> Pog. Yeah, dude. Ever since he uh, named uh, that ga- Dance Gavin Dance album as worst of the year, he was right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so hard. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, God's Pee at State's End is just kind of amazing, and you should expect that from. Yeah, it's really them. good. And for, when I first listened to it, I was like, "Oh, this is pretty good." And then listened to it again, and I was like, "Oh, yeah." Like scene from Indiana Jones One where <laughs> <laughs> the Holy Grail melts the face off. Yeah, that's the Ark of the Covenant. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Uh, uh, uh. Well, I mean, to be fair, like the same scene happens in all four of those movies. What? <laughs> Dude, hot take. Uh, Last Crusade's the best Indiana Jones. I think that's just right. I don't think anyone disagrees with that. A lot of people like, dude. I mean, Raiders has I impeccable mean, flow. Okay, but Raiders is classic, though. You know, Last Last Crusade is like, I don't know. It's it's a very good finale. Yeah, I agree. And Sean Sean Connery. Yeah, Sean Did Sean Connery Connor. die? He did die. He's dead. I know, yeah. right? It, wild. Speaking of dead bands. Adam is still listening to Shushi for some reason. Hey, they're alive and active. Okay, they just did a Reddit AMA. Yeah, Jamie Stewart was like, "There's a girl. She has a basket of fruit. My father is dead, and everything is worse now." That, that record, was a BoJack Horseman reference. I don't think you got it. I did. That record is based on an art piece commissioned for uh, something. I don't know. Anyway, regardless of that fact, yes, I am still listening to the new Juju record, Oh No, which is very good. Not as good oh, as God's Pete, no. but, but pretty good. I would, like to, I would like to shout out the new Woad record. 
uh, for being a very high octane black metal album with some thrash, with some death, a little bit of everything thrown into a nice modern package. Um, these yeah, guys know how to pretty highly rated on AMG. Yeah, no, I mean they're they, they you know I don't know if you've heard their first album, but it's pretty balls to the wall black metal. And uh, this new one is a little bit different. They, you know, like I said, they throw in some nice other instrumental and uh, stylistic interpretations with some thrashy stuff and some deathy stuff. But obviously, it's still great. These guys know what they're doing. They're on twenty bucks spin. You can't really get bad music from twenty bucks spin. <laughs> um, so fair, yeah. All right. Speaking of uh, the best band ever, dude. I'm sorry, Limp Bizkit. Honestly, one of the greats. I don't think this is new news. We've we have we have talked briefly about our, our friends our friends in Limp. The L I M P yeah. this kid is right here. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five to the six. Jones in for that fix of that limp biscuit mix. Sam Sam's a big fan of, of, well, of one of my, of Fred one and of my the friends boys. has never listened to the biscuit before and so I've just been really? playing all the hits. Oh and every God. time they're just like, Jesus Christ, this is horrible and I'm like <laughs> You're like Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i you know it was the post on 4chan where someone was like scruffy who, who doesn't know um scruffy's a pretty legendary italian music critic mm-hmm. he's written 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 for the past like 40 years pretty consistently like every major album yeah and he's he rated significant other the 90 uh 9 or 98 limp biscuit album higher than like <laughs> in rainbows <laughs> okay, <computer. laughs> um, or in the airplane over the sea all these like legendary uh, modern albums and mm-hmm. it's just kind of right like like fred uh wes john otto and the bass player and dj lethal dude honestly are they better than the beatles they might be they could a hundred percent be like don't get me wrong john lennon paul mccartney pretty good songwriters but do they have anything nearly as good as as break stuff no not a chance like dude i honestly think limp biscuit are one of the best bands of all time one of the best metal bands easily um the my bloody valentine catalog is now on spotify <laughs> uh i've been listening to that very heavily what, what do you mean you mean the demos are now on spotify uh yeah the demos on spotify yo what's the what's like the patrician take that um um glo- the the one of their like not not isn't anything, uh, it's like one of their um demos is like their actually best work. Glider. Or tremolo. No, it's it has like a, it, it might be self titled. It like it, it was only released on cassette back in like Bristol, right? In the late eighties. Well, regardless, the entire My Bloody Valentine count uh, catalog, I believe, or most of it, is on Spotify and all major streaming platforms now, which is pretty cool. Um, who knows what, Wait. who knows what Kevin Shields is up to these days. Could be in the lab. We don't Do know. What, what Kevin and Belinda are up to. Of course. Um, and I just have, uh, a couple more things to mention. Um, there's this. Oh, well, we got to talk about how faint is the best song ever written. Hold on. Ho- hold on. We're still going over what we've been listening to, Sam. Yeah, dude. I've been listening to faint by Linkin Park four times a day. I wake up. I hear, I am a little bit of disregard, a little bit of... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm very white. Um, it's but, okay, uh, M's yeah, nose is uh, white too. <laughs> You're telling me that I can't take the way you, you look at me? Don't turn your back on me. Don't turn your back Yeah, no. Um, Dude, I won't be ignored. <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting, very interesting band. Um... I'm sorry. What what actual music have you been listening to? Um, there's this like slowcore post rock album by two ambient post rock uh, solo oh, the Crimson outfits. Crimson Colors. Yeah, In Crimson Colors is a is two ambient post rock groups smushed together. There's just two of them though, so like it's it's two people, um, and they make like a slowcore ambient record. Um, Mm -hmm. here, and it's actually pretty good, um, like, most of the early, the, the tracks earlier in the, um, in the list are, like, just sort of, like, normal sort of slowcore cuts, um, and then later in the record the songs start to get longer and it really starts to get cool and post-rocky and ethereal, 
And it's pretty cool. Um, I don't know if it's the best thing since sliced bread or anything like that, but definitely a record to check out, um, especially if you're just trying to vibe. Fair. Um, so, check it out. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. And then also, I don't know if I, I don't remember if I mentioned this West last week, but there's this um, German band called Wiederganger that dropped uh, a just kind of out of nowhere debut um, independently uh, called Cult of Extinction. And it's pretty brutally hard hitting, but the first song in the record uh, features uh, Neptune's. Uh, or the the Neptune speech from uh, everyone's favorite A24 film, The Lighthouse. <laughs> uh, and uh, that uh, see, because I just I just uh, like whatever. I'm going through my I'm going through my ads. I'm like, hey, cool black metal album, nice art. Sure, throw it on. <laughs> I throw it on. I hear Hark, and I'm like, oh my. I'm like, Hark, I'm like, oh, God. I'm like, oh my goodness, it's here. Have um, they just ascended? Well, no, the first track on this record, A Tower of Light, features most, not most of that speech, but a good hefty part of that speech within uh, the song structure, and I don't know, it's pretty cool. Like, it's funny, because I know what it is, and like, normally I'd be like, oh, this is the most cringe thing I've ever heard, but because... Um, because I know what it is, I don't know. I thought Dude, it was is this what it's? Is this where it's and the, like being, the record's good too? So being like Swedish and listening to a Dungeon Synth album, and they sample <laughs> your favorite like old movie. <laughs> Seriously, no, dead ass. Like it's just some random anonymous German Atmo black band that's just like, yeah, okay, lighthouse, lighthouse time. Oh, dude, there's this there's this kid in one of my English classes who is. This is so off topic, <laughs> but who's the atypical like English major? Mm -hmm. Like this kid, lo I, I think I've literally told you about him before. But he literally like he gets off by telling people like just like that he likes a twenty four movies and like Catcher in the Rye. <laughs> okay. And like every time this kid introduces himself to someone, he'll be like, "Oh yeah, I am a and super involved in in movies. I love movies. I'm a major cinephile." And then he'll be like, "When I saw Midsummer." I puked in the theater. That's oh my god, Midsummer was so brutal. It blew, it blew my mind. It I... made me think that, are we really here, or is this pain just an illusion? <laughs> and he, this kid, he, and he wears a lighthouse, like, oh, no joke, he wears no. a lighthouse, like, metal style, like, long sleeve shirt and a lighthouse hoodie and he has an a24 <laughs> hat and he wears them all the time and so the lighthouse which is probably one of my favorite movies it's just been ruined for me <laughs> okay now i'm thinking about getting a lighthouse metal hoodie is that kind frankly of but yeah no that's crazy 24 actually have some pretty like alt fashion stuff like the stuff you'd see like emo influencers wear you know sure, it's yeah. like an obituary shirt with like a 96 tour on the back yeah that's um, funny yeah so i just had to bring that up lighthouse amazing movie though. yeah great great film um <laughs> yeah okay um um dude you you've been missing out because you haven't been listening to with heart towards none that's a great record also came I out honestly like had never heard any Migua from, bef Dude, you're from before. Dude, you're you're a dingle. Shut you're up! I haven't heard any from before. Exercises futility. <gasps> oh, Dormy! Oh, Dormy! <laughs> he literally just peeked the mic and cut and broke it through disc. That's fine. Anywho, um, and I was sort of surprised that this album's a lot more atmospheric in nature. Like when I think Migua, I think sort of hyper modern yeah. production and like a, a distinct lack of reverb in the guitar tones. Like, I'm 95% sure what they're doing for those tones is they're using, like, a super modern high-gain amp, like a an Engel Savage or something, yeah. or a Randall Satan, or, like, any of these absolute monsters, and just turning the gain at, like, 30. That's what it sounds like, and they have yeah. awesome tones, but Heart Towards the One is a lot, is a lot more uh, atmospheric. No, their older stuff is a lot grittier. Um, and, uh, I mean, I'm not... Obviously, it's great. Like, um, Dark Side and actual songwriter's name know, know what they're doing um well yeah m yeah m. yeah dark side and m know what they're doing mm -hmm. and may or may not be nazis so that's cringe that, that... 
there's many reports on this. We this is old news, but they Okay, they're... I'm just saying I'm just saying, bro, like if you and me were professional like musicians, I'm and not a literal neo Nazi was like, Hey, do you wanna to tour with me? I feel like we'd be like, you know what? No, dude. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Their music is not about that though. History fucking um, Come on, you're not, not going to finish it? You're not going to finish the quote, dude? Uh, dumb, 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 history fucking, uh, I don't, I don't remember, I know, I know the phrasing, but I don't know the actual word. Is that Pretty three? Sure is that, is that a... No, age? that's, dude, that's five. That's age five? Yeah. <laughs> now nah, I'm looking I, it up. Fu- funnily enough, I don't actually know the quote, I was, just, I was expecting you to finish it. Uh... Uh, no way. That's gotta be. Hold on. No, it's five, bro. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm taking too much time. <laughs> yeah, right. Isn't this supposed to be a damnation? Uh, yeah, but we're not there yet. No, wait, no, wait a minute. Yeah, no. You it's are. Six. It's six. I'm sorry. I'm You're... sorry. I thought. You, you led me astray. Bro, I was literally the false prophet. History oh my god, it's... Gets over it. Gets over it? That's the line? Yeah. I was gonna say overused, but that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, no. uh, history fucking gets over it all. Gets over it up. Yeah, alright. <laughs> so, uh, make what good band. Let's see, what else we gotta talk about? Genesis, um, Uwusu, this album's great. Um, also, I, I learned that he's literally like 22, so if you ever feel bad about yourself, <sighs> yeah. Thanks, Sam. I feel bad about myself every day. Dude, how's the Princess and the Frog soundtrack? Dude, the Princess and the Frog soundtrack is not very good. I'm not gonna lie. There's, like, <laughs> a couple bangers, but... Yeah. I'm sure you you can assume that someone else was using my Spotify, which obviously uh, took its toll. And you know what's funny? Is I listened to all these other records a lot this week. I listened to a lot of music this week. Yet, the Princess and the Frog soundtrack is still on there, so... Do with that information what you will. Anyway. Damnation. I don't know. Oh, last, last band we should talk about is, uh, dude, this this new single from, um... Oh, uh, yeah. Goddamn, See You Space Cowboy. And, uh, If I Die First is, is a slapper. I think that is a contentious talking point. Well, and... <laughs> If I Die First is, is like, this bizarre, like, mid-2000s emo throwback band. It's, like, a super group with um, the guitarist from From First to Last, Little Lotus, and then two of Ghost Mane's live band members. Isn't, um, isn't there a, there's a, there's a, like, um, a mid, a mid-2010 prog influence too like prog metalcore like born of osiris worship um i don't remember who whether it's the drummer or the guitarist but yeah no, no fucking I, weird yeah it's weird and uh you know a team with, with our with our our individuals in cu space cowboy to just make this absolute like screamo banger with disgusting auto-tuned choruses mm-hmm. that i honestly i've been slapping every morning i wake up i listen to faint once i listen to limp biscuits cover of faith once and then i listen to bloodstained eyes horrible <laughs> okay i guess it would be nice <laughs> come on adam um anyway we spent um, 20 minutes just talking about nothing well we talked about stuff but we're going to talk about more stuff now that we're talking about everyone's favorite pre-Opeth Change acoustic record. Do, 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 do. Um, the, the Damnation one. The sixth, the seventh one. Damnation. Yeah, it's the, it's the follow-up to Deliverance. It was originally supposed to be the B-side to that album's A-side, part of a double album. And for it, Opeth was, and Michael was like, oh, shit, I just want to write a clean song. I'm, I'm sorry. That's just racist. That's racist of me. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> uh, no, you identified it. You're fine. Um, no. Uh, yeah. So Michael was like, "All right, we're gonna do a heavy record and a clean record." And the clean record is produced by Stephen Wilson. It was recorded second after the arduous time that was Deliverance. And 
you can kind of tell that like with this record, Michael was a lot more excited about it. That's why I saved it for last. And you can really hear it in the mm-hmm. songs. Like it sounds like a dude who's just a huge fan of like seventies prog and taking his sort of metal sensibilities and ear for like dissonant open chords and applying it there and making some really melancholic, beautiful music with the the textures of, of that time. Yes. I agree. And you can totally tell Stephen Wilson, like, oh not only God. did he produce it, but, like, yes. his hand is thoroughly up this album's ass the entire time. And Absolutely. it's it's good, because, you know, I'm not the biggest Stephen Wilson fan, but the man knows what sounds good, and the man knows how to add textures to songs. And, you know, I've listened to this album probably more than any other Opeth album. I know every second of the entire thing. I can play it all on guitar. This is, this is the record that got my dad into Opeth. And uh, I don't know. The, listening back to it now for this podcast, I just hear like the immaculate use of texture. Like it reminds me, honestly, of like um, we'll, we'll make this comparison a lot, but the contortionist clairvoyant, like just the way that basically every song has like a bunch of really subtle layers that contribute to just a really gorgeous picture. Mm-hmm. This is like one of the few sad boy prog rock pr- yeah. albums that like just kind of I don't know. It's pretty amazing. I agree. Um, this record is very interesting, um, especially uh, seeing as it's just a complete... Well, not complete departure, obviously, but it is certainly out of left field in a lot of aspects. Um, and, like, it, it doesn't... Even though it's still using a lot of the Opethy tropes, like, this is a new record and a new sound, and all of these songs are different than you know, the ones that came before them. Oh, totally. And, like, even, uh, like, we've heard Clean Opeth songs in the past, like Harvest, um, I don't know. Uh, Credence. Um, that's, that's, uh, uh, that's... To Bid You Farewell. To Bid You Farewell. Credence is, uh, My Arms, yeah? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, anyway. But this is, this, all the songs here sound distinctly different, and they don't sound like retreads. They sound like new Sonic territory, and they're just... Like, above all else, they're just really, really well written and performed. Mm-hmm. And they're all different, frankly. Every song in this record is pretty varied. Um, yeah, no, totally. Which certainly helps it in the grander scheme of things. If I have one critique of this record, I think the the closing pair of ending credits and weakness aren't the strongest way to yeah. close an album. And you can sort of tell that, like, this was not supposed to be a standalone record. <laughs> Because if you listen to Deliverance and then this album, it kind of works, right? But if you listen to Just This Album in Isolation, you get to um, ending credits, and it's like, and it's just like, oh, it's an Opeth instrumental, and then Weakness is just like, yeah, it's kind of weird. Kind of weird. But we'll get, we'll get into that. Um, I don't know. I want to go song by song. I could. I could really spend a while on all these tunes. I really love them all. I think we could just jump right into it. I mean, th- I think this record. This record certainly has a sound, and it never changes that relative sound. Yeah. No, it definitely has a power. So. And like, I will say, I think, like above all else, the drum tone is just immaculate here. Like, oh my god, yeah. Few metal drummers who could just you know, jazz their way through a soft prog album. And Lopez, and Lopez sure Lopez does is it. One of them, yeah. And he, I mean. As someone who has attempted to learn many of these songs on drums, I can tell you that he is certainly not sacrificing technicality uh, on uh, many of these tracks. Particularly yeah, no. the first one, Window Pain. Yeah, when, that's such an iconic intro and such a great way to open the, the record. You know, up until this point, you're very much used to Opeth Records opening up with the sickest riff imaginable. <laughs> like before this, we had Wreath. Uh, mm-hmm. For that we had Leper Affinity. For that we had the More. For that we had what? Um, April, April Ethereal. Ethereal. Yeah. And so you know we're used to Acca riffs, and the fact that this album just opens on a very like a solo, dark single guitar, and like this is one of the few Opeth songs with a capo. It just gives the whole thing this really somber quality, and that's a re- it's a really gorgeous refrain chord. Absolutely, <laughs> it's very iconic and. I mean, the whole that goes to the whole song. I mean, obviously, if you know who Opeth is and you're watching this podcast, you fucking heard Window Pain. Like, like yeah, don't. And, I mean, don't for good yourself. reason. Like, this song is a master class in like how to do something like this. Mm-hmm. Like, and like then you know that that really subtle but iconic Lopez feels sick. 
do, 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 mm-hmm. do, and suddenly you realize, you know, the song's in six, because why wouldn't it be? And um, Mendez comes in with the, just a really warm bass, you know, he's having a little fun with it. And the yeah. transition to the co- into the verse is really nice. Like, suddenly you get another acoustic guitar, and he's playing this really somber open voice chord. And I think, like, the coolest thing about this album for me is just the use of Mellotron and how, like, artistic it is, you know? Yeah. Like, when when I think Mellotron, I think Yes and Heart of the Sunrise, you know? <laughs> Where it's this gigantic, like... Yeah. A dramatic instrument, right? Like, you know, Wakeman just slams it, or like Emerson using the Maltron, or like what the guy, I forget the session musician that played in King Crimson, but you know, like any of those classic 70 prog bands using it to accent something, because the Maltron's a really weird instrument. So to hear Stephen Wilson, you know, gigantic prog nerd, like use it in such a subtle way that adds so much to the song consistently throughout this record is awesome. Yeah. And I like the transition here is great because, you know, Michael comes in. Um, blink fi- or gosh, now I got to look at, at the lyrics because I do know all the lyrics. It's just sort of hard to remember them off the top Make of my head. clear in seconds of light. light. Disappears and returns again. Countless hours. Sir. Yeah. So, you know, Michael com- comes in with the, the vocals and then the switch up after that where you just sort of have the Mellotron outlining the melody. Playing chords. It's really, it's very, very nice. And I mean, obviously, as you said, it's just the way this album is produced, the way this album is mixed is uh, nigh. Yeah, it's just perfect. It's it's almost perfect. I think the the original 2003 mix is honestly a little better than the remix just because it's a little warmer. But the remix is still great. And I love how I, two things that really stick out on Window Pane on repeat listens is A, the bridge, and B, the guitar solos. Like yeah. the first solo here, and both solos are super tasteful, but the first solo is sort of like a, a bluesy, like rocky solo that happens right after the first verse. And it's, it's just very tasteful. It's very nice. Yeah. And like I can, like I can you know think in my memory it's, it's a very lyrical solo i don't know yeah i mean this, this, this i think that window pane is probably the best acoustic opeth track and i don't know if anyone's willing to argue that um, yeah right like what beats it <laughs> uh so like if you're going into damnation with literally anything just know that like Nothing will be able to top the opener, which isn't a bad thing necessarily. Um, but just know that, like, I don't know, like this is this is the record. This is what you're gonna get at the whole time. No, I feel you. But uh, like once again, this song sort of the the way this song ebbs and flows is just genius. Because after the solo, you know, we get a return to the vo- the verse, then we get the sort of the refrain, the oh, right, yeah. And then Lopez starts hitting like the ride a little, mm-hmm. getting a little ding, into ding, it. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Um, as all like you can tell, Michael like you know he's at he's at the point in songwriting where the transitions are just god given, and the way it sort of morphs into the bridge is awesome. And I think the best moment of the song is that second guitar solo. I completely agree. It's really pretty. It it perfectly accents everything that's being played under it. And it's so soft, um, and just I guess not acoustically played, but like it's it, you're right. It just feels very warm, very cozy, yeah, very well, close. I, mean, I guarantee, to... you, like it sounds like it's on the neck pickup of a of a PRS, and it's it's a super it's a super like yeah, like you said full tone. Um, but it's also like kind of, I don't know. It's it's lower in the mix, and it's playing this very somber melody. And it's it's very gorgeous. And then the way you know, it comes back, it reprises the intro after like this minute long solo is really cool. Once more mm-hmm. with the Mellotron. Yeah. I agree. And I don't know this whole like this whole song really is just beautiful. It flows really nicely. I like how it switches between four and six. The bridge is a cool mix up with that signature like Opeth thing they do with the descending bass note. Do 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 do. 
was really nice um and the solos are gorgeous and michael like i feel like a lot of people say like michael comes into his own on still life nah damnation like is michael's best vocal performance i would agree i would i would i would completely agree because there is no time i felt more enthralled and just completely uh, i guess allured by the the acker vocal uh yeah, than, no, on, totally. than on this record and obviously he's not screaming, which is obvious, which is at least seemingly one of his strongest um, suits as a performer. But no, even even here, even when there's not a single scream on the record, he still is easily one of the most impressive uh, in the game, in the whole yeah, game. No, I mean, his choir boy vocals just sound gorgeous here, very somber, you know, reverbed out a little. Um, and they sound great with these uh, arrangements. And yeah. I guess this is what brings us to the lyrics. Like, this album, more so than any other Opeth album, is liter- like, it's literally about nothing. Every single song is like a general sense of like loneliness or somber or whatever. But this, they're not really, it's not really coherent. But I think this is one of the rare o- occasions where it works. Because, well, like, I don't know, like, this song is kind of, is, like, literally just about, like, I don't know, being sad and thinking about stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like we can sort of give the band a break here. Uh, they're already departing from their sound, so it might be just fine to, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt when it comes to uh, the b- yeah. lyrical front. I will say, I mean, I do like the imagery here, like... The slurred voice over children cry. And I like the, the there's deep prejudice in me. And uh, given dreams all ridden with pain and projected onto the last. Like, I don't know. There's there's some good imagery here. And it definitely sells, like, sort of the vibe. Cause, oh, yeah. You know, I'll compare this to Clairvoyant a few more times before the record ends. But Clairvoyant's <laughs> lyrics are objectively bad. Like, as a record. Like, I, yeah. I, I don't know. Kind I, of. I, I, I've, I think they're the weakest aspect of the album, and you know it's it's still the arrangements and the overall like compositions and the production, they all just sort of sell the vibe, and the lyrics are just another piece of that puzzle. We're uh, talking about so. uh, Clairvoyant by the Contortionist, of course, their 2017 record that we both stand as one of the best prog records of all time, one of the best albums of all time, maybe. Who knows? Uh, that's our that's our horrible like 17 year old take. That's a. Um, <laughs> But alas, uh, yeah, this record kind of ha- achieves a similar thing. Like, you just kind of need pretty vocals and nice imagery. And don't focus too much on what Michael's saying, because it might right. not make sense. But, the like, the songs are there. And Window Pain just is, like, one of the... It re- I know we say this at least once an episode, but Window Pain is one of the best Opeth songs. <laughs> it really is. I mean, there's a reason it has nearly double these streams as literally every other Opeth song. Yeah, I, well, it's because it can get included in, like, soft rock it's true yeah but like you'd never know you know if you were a soft rock head who just threw on a spotify place you'd be like oh wow this is really nice i wonder what to do and you'd be oh, severely she, disappointed she by the, well i don't know it's kind of weird that way because now that this is all they do true but a little I different mean, but yeah huh, all right we're you talking about live staple yeah another great track yeah, I mean, le- le- the first three, the first six tracks on this album are honestly great. So, um, yes, "In My Time of Need" is next, and uh, yeah, it's a very nice little, little, little ballad, little ditty. It's not as little epic ballad. as it has a chorus, bro. I know. Um, it's not as epic as "Window Pain" by any mean, but it does have some cool uses of uh, more dissonant and darker. Uh, melodies and mm. uh, chordal sections um, in the verse and like post-chorus stuff. Uh, yeah, and which, I mean the, cool. the use of vocal melodies on this record is also really cool. Like oh, often it's Steven actually singing them, and you hear yeah. them on a you hear it in Window Pane, you hear it in um, in my time in your Deathless Rule of the Bye. Yeah, he's like, on. Really he's got to be on every track on this record. Every track yeah, totally. where there's some sort of backing vocal, if, like at Steven. It's not. If you watch the making of Damnation and Deliverance. <laughs> For the deliverance part, you can tell that Michael and, and Steven are just like in love. Like they're like Michael, who looks like he like he looks like he's thirteen and pu- and like pudgy, yeah. and he's just like smiling like an idiot every time he sees Steven like doing something musically. He's like, oh. <laughs> and I mean, you can you can tell it definitely comes out in the music. But yeah, yeah. the song opens with a really gorgeous chord and just repeats it for a while. Do no 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 no. 
uh, with a bunch of like uh, reverb delay chorus. It sounds really nice. Mm -hmm. And then Lopez comes in, the Mellotron leads into the chorus. Yep. Um, and I, I really like the vocal pattern in the in the verse. The I can't see the meaning of this life. I'm Lee. Yeah, it's just I don't know. It's very staccato. Yeah. It's filtered. It sounds really nice. You got you got the pre-chorus, the summer's miles and miles away, bro. Uh, uh yeah. Are you? Wait a minute. Oh yeah, no, I'm stupid. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. I was I was confused. Never mind. We're good. Yes, I agree. This song <laughs> is great, and uh, yeah, you got some vocoder in here. Nice little yeah. nice little vocoder. Um. That's a very Stephen Wilson technique. I think every record Stephen Wilson has ever <laughs> been on, there is a vocoder being used. Yeah, actually, um, yeah, if you listen to his remixes of like the Yes classics, he throws vocoder in there, no joke. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think this track, this uh, this song's really interesting because I it is easily one of the more ballad ballads on this record. Um, whereas something like Window Paint's kind of more, I guess, driven by the instrumentation. Mm -hmm. um but yeah in my time of need i can understand why it's a live staple because y you know it's relatively easy to play i'm sure uh and it has a big sing-along chorus bro. yeah it's got a big sing-along chorus so um it's cool this song is great again it follows very well after uh uh, bu bu yeah, no I mean, pain. uh what's what's cool about this song is the way it builds because you know the first verse is just the guitar and drums right. Uh, and vocals and then you get to the chorus and then the bass kicks in in the second verse it's almost like a radiohead moment yeah like, it suddenly sort of recontextualizes the rest of the instruments it has a pretty cool bridge which creates a little dissonance you got another mm -hmm. really tasty guitar solo i love uh, the solo on the song and the bridge yeah no at times the dark's fading slowly but it never sustains yeah no it's really nice and the uh, the solo is pretty tasty though, too. Like, yeah. Uh, and and then we you know we just go right back into one final repetition of the chorus, except this time even more Mellotron, and then Lopez <laughs> is doing some big fills that sound nice. Yeah. Do -do -do -do. Overall, pretty freaking good track. Another yeah. song about uh being in my time of need. I'm I'm lonely. I'm sad. Yeah, I think this one specifically is like wanting someone else there. Yeah. Like. I try to forget you as you forgot me. Mm -hmm. He's he's bro. Michael bro. just got cocked. Bro, he wa he wants his his so. Melinda, why? Why did bro. you do that, dude? The Opus Cinematic Universe. <laughs> Stupid. I don't know. Oh I, honestly, God. my time needs probably my least favorite like good song in this record, but it's still quite good. It's maybe. Um, I think it. I, I, well, I think another one of my favorite tracks on this record is the next track, uh, Death, Death Whisper. Um, I love the vocals on this track, and oh, I, I actually I think the lyrics are actually they're not. I mean, they're not like poetic genius or anything, but like wow, the way the way this track delivers uh, its vocals and just completely sticks in a worm in your ear and has it wriggle around for the rest of the day. Oh, oh. it's really clever. Yeah. And like that's once again opens on a really dissonant chord, mm. open chord. There's a theme for this record, but yeah, like oh my god, that mm. out on the road there are fireflies circling. I, mean, I can't sing it. Oh, yeah, it's it's really pretty and then you get the really subtle Whoa. like synth. Yeah. Sleep my child. Yeah, it's, it's nice, and it's funny because you don't really notice it, but like, there's a lead guitar in the chorus that's like yeah. sort of noodling around. Yeah, it's just kind of it's it's so it's so buried that you you really can't tell um, that it's there. Mm -hmm. I really like the post chorus too, like with the two chords going back and forth. Yep. And, the, uh, and what as always, the song sort of opens up throughout. It's really clever in that sense we get a post uh, second chorus solo that's very tasty with a sort of like a post rock lead quality to it yeah tremolo this picking this song i don't know this song reminds me of something but i really can't put my finger on it and maybe it's just because this song makes me it's so familiar every time i hear it 
like every single time. Um, mm-hmm. But like, it sounds like some other band or something. I can't really put my finger on it, but I'm not sure. Um, I feel you. It's a great track. Uh, yeah, I and, mean, I think another like as as always, the transitions are spot on. The way after the solo, it sort of cuts out, and the solo acoustic guitar comes back in is awesome. The way the third verse has like sort of a minor third yeah. doing a nice like harmony is awesome. And the way that that the final chorus uh, sort of reprises the lead guitar is really cool. Um, with like the tremolo pick at the end. And once again, we hear Lopez just going ape shit. It's really cool. Accents, everything. And the whole thing is just smooth. I like this whole record is just very smooth. It's very warm. Like I, you know, I, I was telling Adam before the cast started, but I've heard this record like more than any other Opeth probably. <laughs> and it's just, it's just cozy to me. It's just like it's... something nice that I want to hold. <laughs> It's kind of funny to me because, like, this, for some reason, this, like, we we talked about how we really didn't feel like Damnation was put together very well. Um, Or at least in comparison to the other Opeth albums. And to completely shift gears here on, uh, or uh, Deliverance, uh, on Damnation, like, these songs really feel completely realized mm-hmm. um, yeah, no, I agree fully fleshed out there's really nothing more they could have done with any of these songs they're they're perfectly written like they're 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 distinct they're finite um, they, none of them go on for too long it's just it's just really 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 tight songwriting here yeah totally and like the, the way they all feel very totally consistent too which is really nice because yeah. there's some sort of whiplash on deliverance because all the tracks are kind of all over the place yeah and we'll see that again at in watershed <laughs> but for now um like for damnation all the tracks really flow perfectly yeah and like the fact that they all sort of open in similar ways i'll have very similar sonic aesthetics i'll do opeth things in a in a i guess a soft prog context just works no mm-hmm Closure, though, <laughs> probably probably the, one of the better songs here. It's really good. I would agree. That's just, like, such a great opening. Like, you have this bizarre, like, 12-string Middle Eastern chord progression with Michael singing over it. Heal myself a feather on my heart. It's like, I don't know. I don't know what that means, but it sounds <laughs> great. Yeah, this, this, this track is especially unique in... Um you know the way they use i guess very weird chords and uh i guess guitar melodies and vocal melodies i suppose to um make something pretty compelling throughout even though you know it doesn't get much bigger than any of the other tracks on here Mm -hmm. Uh, no dude come on the song has kind of a breakdown almost a little bit a little bit Um, it does get fully electric well, At it's really point. like this. This is another like great moment because you know after sort of like a minute and ten seconds of Michael just singing with acoustic guitar, the whole band comes in on this mm-hmm. haunting chord with, you know, electric guitar with a phaser, bass, yeah. drums playing like a cymbal roll and like a very subtle synth. Mm-hmm. It sounds like it's about to break into a Blackwater Park riff and just go bananas. Yeah, no, totally, and like that's uh. a that's a really cool like. Uh, this is one of this is my favorite song in the record to play. It's just really fun. Like the do 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 Like it's just very fun, very moving, like acoustic part. And the way that the whole song kind of builds around it's cool. Like you get you know Lopez doing some Tom stuff, and Mendez doing some bass fills. You have this really sinister synth lead going from high to low. Yeah. And then the phaser kicks back in, it settles into a groove, and it's, it's just a really clever songwriting. Yeah. Like, I don't know what else to say. I, pff, I mean, that's all you really need to say. Uh, I, I think that's a, a generally a running theme with Opeth. Uh, what about very, the, uh, there are some there well so at 243 everything sort of cuts out in the middle of a verse and then michael comes in with just michael and the acoustic guitar with the awaiting words on what's to come it's kind of a weird moment yeah before going back into you know like the moment that everyone remembers this song for <laughs> Which is like that outro with like this utterly bizarre like sitar like instrument yeah. and like a the scale on top of it and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's so it, it, fun. It's fun 
also very weird and kind of out of place, but it works very well. No yeah, matter totally. throughout. It's very bouncy. There's like this random choir Mellotron on there. Yeah. And then it keeps on adding things. And, and I remember like for the first like 10 times I heard this record, I was like, oh, I guess Spotify just broke. Or like, I guess my CD just skipped. But no, nope, that's the way Closure ends. Yeah. It's funny because it's called Closure, but there's no closure. It just ends mid phrase and just begins right into uh, with yeah. Hope Leaves. I, I always get jarred too. I, I always get thrown for the loop. Um, Which is but, honestly yeah. kind of clever, but yeah, yeah closure is really fun. Like it's basically like four really cool acoustic guitar sections, and then sections two and four have a lot more going on. And mm. the, the, you can never forget like the Indian uh, scale breakdown. It sounds it oh, <laughs> sounds yeah. super fun, and it it's it's kind of an, a nice like piece of joy in this record because the yeah. rest of it's pretty dismal. Well, at least maybe not joy, but high energy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at the very, at the very least, so yeah. And then uh, hope leaves sort of returns to the template, which, which we've seen in, in my time of need and death whispers. Yeah. You got another, you got another vocal filter on this track, huh? Yeah, and you have this once again a really gorgeous chord, with some um, some reverb, some delay on it, and maybe even be like an electric twelve string. Mm. And I really like how this song just lets the acoustic and Michael's voice breathe for quite a while too. Yeah, it, it, it has to at least uh, take a little bit to get into the full band. Mm -hmm. And instead of just coming in all at once, we get sort of this really subtle guitar solo and then some bass work before we re-enter the verse. And right. it's a really nice bass line. It's very fat. It's very song serving. And Lopez is like really riding the beat, taking his time. Yeah. And I like how the chorus for the song doesn't really feel like a chorus. It feels like an extension of the verse more so. Yeah. I uh, I think that uh, there's one of Michael's best vocal performances on the record too. Mm -hmm. uh, he's very dynamic um, throughout, and obviously they're one of the focal points on the track. So it's good to hear that he's not skimping on anything like that. You know, I agree. This song, I mean, after after sort of like the the introduction of the entrance, so it's pretty straightforward. You just get verse, chorus, verse, chorus out. Hmm. But you know, as always, there's some subtle synth work, some subtle Meltron, some vocal harmonies, and the song just ends on a fade out, which is a little interesting. But it does it does sound nice, and the, you know, it's it's very it's a very pretty, it's a very somber piece, and it works well. And it is <laughs> literally about like being sad and contemplative, like the entire record. It's um, I'm gonna give another prop to the uh, flow and sort of track placement on this record because it really does keep it interesting throughout. Because yeah, like totally. if you if you threw this right after Window Pane, it's the same fucking song. But like yeah, totally. the like the after you know whatever the hell closure was like it's perfectly placed uh, to just lead us back in to what we're sort of been complacent with for the yeah, last I agree. Th 20 minutes or so. And, I mean, the last 20 minutes of it, it is, like, like <laughs> To Rid the Disease is sort of uh, another one of the album's bigger moments mm -hmm. in the chorus. In True Damnation fashion, it opens up with very, you know, subtle uh, electric guitars um, with, very, with a, you know, a sort of filter on... Michael's voice, um, some yeah. interplay between like the cymbals, some bass, very subtle bass work, mm -hmm. before settling into a groove that's highlighted with Mellotron, <laughs> which Mellotron, is definitely Mellotron. the template for this record. But it works, it's all right. and the chorus here is quite big. Yeah, it sounds it sounds it sounds like a Benighted or a uh, or a Face of Melinda or anything like that. And the I feel like the more more so than any other track on this record, this chorus is super seventies prog. More, oh, like, I can see it totally. Because like window, like sure, the rest of it's paying homage, but that that chorus is literally like something out of a Tull song. Sure. And you know, I one as once again the the way that instruments are introduced is really cool. The way how like it does the deer hunter thing where the first chorus is soft and then the second and third are bigger. That's it's, a frog like, thing, not a deer hunter thing. You know what I mean? I just think Gloria by deer hunter. Yeah. 
fucked up. And that 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 Mellotron progression is killer during the chorus. The mm-hmm. yeah. sounds very cool. Very. And um, um yeah, I don't know. I, I like the sort of the big vocal performance too. Um there's innocence torn from its maker. Trust in you. I've lost all trust I had in you. <laughs> like it's so dumb, but it works, yeah. you know. And as all, we I, we have two tasteful solos here, the second of which is like sort of um it, it's over a, like a, a clave section, which yeah. is bouncing between 4 and 6 and sounds really cool. And I honestly could not tell you if Michael or Peter plays play most of these solos, but they sound great. Yeah, well, regardless. And, I, and the the outro to the song is very cool. Mhm. I mean, it, it, the whole second half of the track is an outro. You know. It, yeah, it's it's dope. So. It, it's it's alternating between like a nice guitar line and like a nice piano melody. Do 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 do. Wow 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 wow. wow. I don't know, it's very it's very it's very nice, and I appreciate here that like. You know, they're not just sort of, like you said earlier, every song here has sort of a distinct personality within the, the record, but they're all very uniform. Yeah. And um. it fades out and leads directly into ending credits, which for a long time I thought was a bonus track, because it kind of sounds like a bonus track. Well, you know, I thought that Weakness was a bonus track, but you're kind of right that it does sound like a bonus track, but at the same time, like, I don't know, it... it no, nothing against Opeth, but it kind of irks me a little bit that they put the closing track as the second to last track on this record. I don't know. Maybe it's a meme. Steven Wilson thought it would be funny. Actually, you know what? I could check my CD right now. And check if Weakness see- is... Because I looked on, like, Metalum, and it's there. Okay, I know I believe you, but, you know, with records like this, sometimes yeah. the original printing's a little different, so I'll be right well, back. Well, yeah, go check your CD. Um... As for ending credits, um, I don't know. This is a, a fine little instrumental closer. It is interesting that it is instrumental because it kind of does pick up the pace from where the rest of the record has sort of left off. And it actually feels more like an, a, a straighter Opeth track. Straighter. Um, a more <laughs> straightforward Opeth track uh, than all, what is Al Spenda Slade on here. But Yeah, um, weakness, weakness and ending credits are both part of the album. Okay, so yeah. Um, it is, it, I, I was saying basically that, you know, this track is sort of, I guess as, as opethy as like as classic opethy as they yeah, might get on no, this record. I mean, it's just, it's just four chords, a groove and a solo. Yeah. And I mean, I like how the solo builds as always, cause they, they know how to write songs, <laughs> make it interesting. And I like how at the end, the, the Mellotron mirrors it once again. It's very mm-hmm. pretty. And no. the way it fades into weakness is nice, because weakness Absolutely. is a really bizarre outro, but it kind it kind of works, but it always leaves me wanting more, you know. I can understand that. Well, it doesn't feel like you're finishing a record when you listen to weakness. Yeah, it's just kind of like, oh, you have this really haunting and spooky synth lot lead, and you know, Michael singing soft nothings. Yeah. It's, 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 I don't know. It's, it's kind weird. of a mood killer. Like it's kind of, like this whole record's kind of sad, but weakness always makes me extra sad, you know. I mean, in what way though? Like in a, in an actual like mood way, like oh gut punch right at the end, or is it like okay, well I don't know, this is a sad record, but it's unfortunate to see that the song is at the end of the track list. Um, yeah, sort of both, and I get sort of why. Both. Like, you know, this whole record—it's literally called Damnation. Like, the whole record is a very in, like introspective, personal journey, and so to have it end on like Blackwater Park or something would make it feel a little disingenuous. Yeah, the, the fact that it just sort of patters out is would make sense. But the right. song's also pretty emotional, you know, like the. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> like it's all—it's all very direct. Like I miss you, turned away into a thousand dreams, found out what they mean, lost you there in a moment of truth. I trust you, gave you, gave away the one and only heart, a gift to tear apart. Like it's kind it's, of funny. It's kind of weird because, like, I feel like I, I'm still irked about the ending credits thing, because like, like this song, this is not an interlude song, but it sure sounds like one. Um, mm-hmm. I think if they stuck this 
earlier in the record, it might be a little better. Maybe after Death Whispered a Lullaby right before closure. I don't know. I, don't, I couldn't tell you. I think that's why that's like that's my thing. Is like my biggest critique of Damnation is it feels like an EP because it sort of is. It's really six songs with an extra seven minutes stapled on at the very end. Yeah. And like for any ending credits, like I, I mean I don't know the process for the song, but knowing that Michael wrote like most of Deliverance in at night in between recording sessions, I guarantee it didn't Wait, take him mean, that long. You mean Damnation? Uh, and I meant Deliverance. Oh. No, be like, he, uh, Michael wrote most of that record at night in between recording sessions. Oh, yes. And so, Damnation, it sort of feels like the ending credits and weakness were just very, you know, last minute songs, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, they were sort of writing the record in order. They're and like, then, shit, we, and need, then we like, need two more songs to well, make no, 40 minutes. Because, like, this, this was literally supposed to be the back half of a double album. Yeah. And so, it'd make a lot more sense if, you know, you have the first six songs or whatever, and then ending credits and weakness, the label's like, uh, it needs to be 40 minutes so we can mark it yeah. as an LP. Yeah. And I'm mean, uh, wrong. Yeah. I like uh, ending yes. credits, and I like weakness. Like, I think they work, and I think it sort of sells some of the thematic messaging of the album. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it, this record is really six songs, and then, like, a half song if you take yeah. <laughs> if, if like both weakness and ending credits are a quarter you know it's kind of hey we're college students we're tired all the time um I drank a bang this morning I'll have you know <laughs> so you're gonna be tired in what an hour you'll, you'll, you'll take <laughs> oh, a, you'll have to take a nap yeah shit um no I don't know I think it's <sighs> it's difficult to assess an album that you think is very good, yet there is certainly something that takes away from it in such a way. Because, like, I like this album a lot, but those final two tracks do always throw me for a loop, and I'm like, what am I... What, what's... Not what's the point. We understand the point. Um, but it's just... It's kind of weird. Also, yeah. something something that's weird about at least weakness to me is every time that song goes all the way to the zero second mark at the very end. Um, Mm. And so uh, it just like, there's no, like, I don't really have time to digest and the way, you know, I hate Spotify, but I use the platform because it's, I don't know, the most accessible and the looks the best, but anyway, um, it always transitions to just some random Opeth song right after, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, well, sh- yesterday, and it transitioned to Serenity Paint to Death, and I was like, oh, <laughs> no, no, seriously, and like, I don't, obviously, that that is not a concern of the band whatsoever, but it's just kind of like something to be like, it's just another weird thing to to tack on to this track. Yeah, no, I mean, I really do feel like Damnation and Deliverance were just kind of hurt by the fact that they were split in two. Because if mm-hmm. you, like, cut a little bit of the fat and make them, you know, one album, it, it's a pretty damn good album, right? Like, yep. you have Off Deliverance, you have Wreath, Banger, Deliverance, Banger. Um, fuck, what's track number f- four or three? Three of Deliverance? It's, yeah. um, uh, uh, Fair Judgment. Yeah, Fair Judgment, also Banger. And then, like, half of... There is a move that is the <laughs> and like half of that song, and yeah. then the you know the second six tracks off of um, damnation, the first six tracks off damnation, and you have a record that's about eighty minutes in length. You can cut cleanly into you know two halves, and it works really nice. There's basically no fat, and all the songs are really good. And there's it's it really shows the two sides of Opeth: a heavy album and a light album, and they both serve a, a nice purpose. And I think it's just a little unfortunate that, you know, for whatever reason, the label split it at last minute and then forced the bands to clearly add more songs or just yeah. compose more for the record. Well, that's it's weird. It's interesting that you mentioned that because, like, fucking damn it, Deliverance is an hour. Yeah, dude. Like, that's well, a, I mean, they're they're Opeth. Like, the band was probably like or the label was probably like, hey, uh, you need to add a fifth song, like real song. And Opeth was like, okay, and then added a 14-minute song, because they're Opeth. Yeah. yeah. It's it's it, the whole, it, it's weird, and I, I think you're right. These certainly work better within tandem of each other than they do um, out of tandem. Mm-hmm. 
Um, yeah, no, I agree. And so I mean, that, that's it's, something it's like one of those prime examples where, like, I mean, the music industry always finds a way to like diminish art. And like, I think of like Automata One and Two is the inverse example because right. those albums, as one album, are great. If you just call it Automata, it's great. You know? Yeah. You, you got like the more straightforward first half, the prior second half, and they balance out nicely. But I remember when Automata One came out, just listening to that and being like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this kind of sucks. And then yeah, hearing a Tom so to two and be like, oh, this is way better. And then together, they, it works really nicely. Right. Yeah, it's 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 really strange. Um, and I'm, you know, I, I do wish it was different, but we have to take it for what it is. And hey, look, the, all that being said, like, Damnation it. is probably my favorite Opeth record. Like, I, I, I adore the Clairvoyant by the Contortionist, and Damnation is sort of the precursor to that. It's a really a beautiful collection of somber prog songs that flow beautifully and have, you know, just a lot of gorgeous moments within them. Like, uh, Window Pane is a perfect song. Every note in that song is placed immaculately. The performances are great. The solos are gorgeous, and it just sounds awesome. And a lot of the songs on the record are very close to perfect, you know? Yeah. And at the end of the day, if I want a night, if I want to sit down and like mope or be sad or, or be nice and cozy and sad i can just throw on damnation and it's there for me you know right so that means a couple of songs two in fact are not to your liking um so you would you give this album a seven perhaps would you would you would you give it a seven um when 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 30 when when th- all right when 30 out of 40 minutes is great like like some of the best work the band's done, and then the other. <laughs> God, <laughs> this is a this bad. Was, this is a bad bit. That was but, that was a bad bit. The song's um, look. The song's better than a damn. Okay. I would agree. I would. I mean, agree. honestly, like I have kind of trouble ranking it for that reason because I do genuinely like sincerely love the first six songs in this album, and weakness and ending credits aren't bad. It just they're not really songs, you know. Yeah. Like, I honestly think they work. I think the subtle leads in both of them are good. I think the use of texture in both of them, as always, is good. The melodies are good because it's Opeth, but they're, they're just not really songs. Yeah. That being yeah. said, like, I don't know, with my heavily biased opinion, this album's like a, sh- a 9.5 for me. I think it's a, I think it's I think it's a nine. I think it's yeah. I, think I mean, like, if you're being different. objective, this album's like probably like a, a like a 7.5, right? But, no, I don't even think so. We we've already been through that. Most of the songs here are good, and, and they're we not can just al- good. They're freaking amazing. Yeah, they, they're they're really freaking good. So I don't know. I think giving it a a, a, a nine isn't a bad thing. Yeah, because no, there's only because I, I mean three three out of three out of um, well it's not even it's it's more than that. Thirty five out of forty two minutes for a record being great. Sure, that's most of the record. So, but where so where does this sit then? See, that's interesting. That's really interesting you bring that up. I mean, if I'm going to be nice and biased, as of now, it goes Blackwater Park, Still Life, and then this. See, I don't even know. See, I... It's funny you mentioned that, because I think I like this album more than I do Still Life. I... Thing is, I do too. Um, like, I don't know if it's better than Still Life, but I like it a lot I also, more. I also, I also really, really like Morning Rise, though, and I wish it were higher. But, um, you know... We, there's only so much we can do. Okay, you know what? Fuck it. Let's use the same metric we used with my arm in Morning Rise. Because at the end of the day, no, I'd true. rather listen to this album than Still Life. No, me too. So is it real? are we really putting it ab- above all of the 90s path? Well, no, because I, I, would, put it, I would put it below Morning Rise. But uh, my, see, see, for me right now, we're going Blackwater Park, Morning Rise, Damnation, The Rest. So oh, and see for me it's like Blackwater Park, Damnation, Still Life, the rest. Right. Yeah, no. Uh, well, so no. what about our collective list? I think. Well, I think I think that we can we we should take a relative stance, but it is important to at least address what we think in that regard. All right, fine. Fuck objectively, it. It's two. this this is no. Objectively, this is below Still Life. That's no. I, I I'm willing to give it that. Fair. Well, I mean. I'm, well, objectivity doesn't exist, and this is Obviously, my goddamn uh, podcast. Yeah, but we, we, you know, we, I mean, if that's the case, then, like, I don't know. I feel like we got to go back and change the whole list, because I don't want My Arms, Your Hurts above Morning Rise. I don't want Still Life above Morning Rise. All right, fine. It'll be number three. and then uh, It's got to be number three. For, like for it, episode, episode, the epilogue, we can argue about 
the Rangers. That's that's fine. That's that that's fine. But I I do think that you know if we're going if we're rating best Opeth albums of all time, yeah, I think Damnation's probably below Still Life and Blackwater Park in just in that relative field in a vacuum. Yeah, no, I mean that's understandable. All right, so from from one down we got Blackwater Park, Still Life, Damnation, My Arms, Your Hearse. Morning Rise, Deliverance, Orchid. Dude, poor Deliverance, all the way at the bottom, dude. Poor guy. Dude, poor Orchid. Orchid's a good album. Yeah, poor Orchid, honestly. Dude, just just wait until like Heritage and Pale Communion <laughs> yeah. and Sorceress get to like what, what's the term? I don't know. They'll they'll, they'll guard the rear. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow, big truck man. Anyway, that's it. We did it. We did it. So are we taking our week off next week, or are we talking about Ghost Reveries? I don't know. We'll figure it out. Because it's a certain someone's, <laughs> we'll figure it uh, out. It's a certain someone's uh, birthday next uh, Thursday. That is that is true. It is it is there is it, it is tax day next. Get your taxes in. Get folks. your taxes if you live in the Northeast. Yeah, get your taxes done, please. Um, just I don't know. Just do it. Don't go. No, tax fraud no. is cr- taxation like, tax- is theft. Tax Dude, fraud the government is a stupid- should not tax us at all. Tax fraud is a stupid crime. Um, so just don't do it. Like, just Dude, do I had it. a, I had a TA, a, a TA sub on one of my classes uh, yesterday. Yeah. And I shit you not. He was a conservative English TA in New England, dude. Well, I shit. that's a, that's, that's all that there is to that right there. No, dude, this guy. So, see, so we're, we're, you it's know, horrible. this is, this is a class with like heavy gender studies underpinnings. Mm-hmm. And so I was kind of surprised that he was even doing it, but this guy like literally has a grad degree in law from Northeastern. And he's like, wow. well, I just think uh, president Trump was a uh, misunderstood. And then he starts go, he starts saying, yeah, I mean, it's just my personal opinion, but I quite frankly, I think piercings and tattoos are disgusting. And like, you know, I have like five tattoos. So I was like, Bro, really? We live in 2021. Come on. Look, man. I had there's a there's a bill uh, in uh, New Hampshire State House right now that is uh, working towards um, a more federally censored federal election rather than it being state regulated. And uh, my wait, what? Cons- well, all right, it's called HR1, okay? HR1, HR1. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, the For the People Act is a bill to extend voting rights, change campaign finance laws to reduce influence of money in politics, limit partisan gerrymandering, and create new ethics rules for federal office holders. And uh, she so was... So is it a good thing or a bad thing? It is a good thing because it makes voting easier, uh, less convoluted, and, um, and reduces gerrymandering, yeah. And reduces gerrymandering. So and obviously, this was not a Republican bill. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Uh, and there, there are actively people. Uh, one of my conservative, uh, uh, I guess, acquaintances, acquaint- acquaintances, <laughs> um, went out and protested against it. What the fuck? Like, do these people just like, like it's. <clears throat> These people literally think democracy or is is when a bunch of rich people make all of the decisions in the country because they were born into generational wealth and that any and all minorities and any and all workers just shouldn't have a voice in their country. Um, like, it, I'd like to quickly call out um, I don't remember who the hell the name of it is, but I I was I was watching some political interview and we obviously have switched off the topic and at this point of Opeth, but um, there was Someone was explaining, like, I guess being a anti-Trump centrist, because that's well, oh. no, well, no, well, no, it's 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 the anti-Trump conservative argument that oh, basically. Oh, you puts mean them the never the, Trumpers? They don't exist. Yes, the, <laughs> they don't exist, dude. Uh, no, they dude. don't exist. But they they they, they say that they, they they are trying to fight for their existence, and I don't know how many times I've heard individuals who have claimed that they're this just completely support 
an everything. oligarch, uh, completely support an oligarchic system and uh, everything that that party. It's just it's it's oh, dude, it's it's disgusting. It's like Lincoln Project Republicans, like Kasich and Bolton, yeah. um, and Romney. And it's funny because we the the DNC blew millions upon do- millions of dollars on donating to the the Lincoln Project in similar groups, so we could get the never Trump Republicans. But spoiler alert: ninety seven percent of Republican voters voted for Trump, and the other three percent, guess who they voted? for uh friggin joe jorgensen like yeah. unfortunately trump is the republican party and i just fucking hate it when neocons try to to lib their way out of it <laughs> i don't know look i agree it's 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 utterly disgusting because i don't know look the republican party should not exist should, chomsky was right when he called it the biggest terrorist organization in the 21st century or something and yeah, on that right. note, uh, how's how's the news looking? <laughs> okay, wait, no, we got to stay on the topic for a hot minute. Hold okay, on. send me this. Send me this. Bro. So, okay, all right. So, t- this is a very recent article. Okay, this this actually this dropped today. Was it on? Is it on Metal Sucks? It is. Uh, uh, how did I know? So this the pinnacle this, of metal reporting. R- right, of course. The, I'm just going to read you the headline. Okay, obviously this is a this is somewhat of a joke article, but it is also to bring awareness to something that I think is very relevant to what we're talking about right now. Okay. Mensa president, Mensa president, Ted Nugent wonders why COVID one through 18 didn't shut anything down. Now, Uh, half of that is quoted and half of it's a joke. I'd like to read the Ted Nugent quote. Uh, and there is an entire 12 minute live stream on the metal sucks page that I highly recommend people watching. it. Oh my god. Um, this year's tour is cancelled again. The production companies won't let us tour again this year. Dirty, bastard, lying, scam, smoke and mirrors, COVID-19 freaks. You know, I guess I would ask you, because I'm addicted to truth, logic, and common sense. And my common sense meter would demand the answer to, why weren't we shut down for COVID-1 through 18? There was a COVID-1, and there was a COVID-2, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. COVID one through eighteen didn't shut anything down, but whoa, COVID nineteen did. Even though it's ninety nine point eight percent survival. Bro, why didn't gonna... we sh- Why didn't we shut down for the AIDS epidemic? Why didn't we shut down for the flu or the Spanish flu or the bird flu or the West Nile flu or influenza? Every year, they claim five hundred thousand people died from COVID nineteen. Bullshit. I believe that medical examiners in all fifty states have gone. I put down on the death certificate that he died of asphyxiation. But they made me put COVID. Well, this guy was stabbed to death, but they made me put down COVID. This guy was run over by a tandem gravel truck doing a four-wheel drift and the crows be pecking at your flesh. But they made me put down COVID-19. Ted Dungeon, everyone. Bro, I'm literally about to walk out, out my window in Minecraft. Yes. Um, like, uh, what? I mean, Ted Nugent is just... An atrocious human being. Like, shout out! Remember when he was like, "Obama's an inhuman or subhuman yeah. mongrel." Like, and then he was like, "Oh, I just said that because I didn't agree with his policies." He also says in this video that there is a Waco, Texas, uh, live show that he is putting on. Uh, I believe tomorrow or uh, today, whenever. Um, unmasked, uh, fully. You know all the. Yeah. Ted We're not going to let the bureaucrats take our rights away. Uh, this, per- this person is he's a disgusting human being. <laughs> and it sucks because, you know, Stranglehold dude, slapper. Dude, Stranglehold is a slapper. Dude, Let's be know, real. People like Ted Nugent just... just they, I mean, I don't want to say anything too mean, but... No, you should. It's fine. Dude, they don't deserve... A, they don't, a, they don't deserve a platform. And B, why the fuck does anyone allow them this like why, why why do people still pay attention like this this is a, this is a friggin a washed up, up like 70s dude who had like a half a hit 50 years ago and ever Seriously. since then at, at every fucking turn all he talks about is how much he hates minorities and hates jews and hates gay people hates you know african-americans and it's, just, it's it's disgusting 
Why do we normalize yep. this? Why do we, in, in America of all places? And why do we just allow like such blatant disinformation to be equivocated with, you know, like, quote, like, I don't know, real data. Like, don't get me wrong. Liberalism sucks for a lot of reasons. But at the very least, like liberals believe science for the most part. Conservatives will just be like climate change isn't real. Transphobia is trans, trans, trans mythical trans unicorns aren't real. Transgenders against God. It's not real. Also, but fetuses this, uh, are birthed from conception. And yes. all, like, true. I don't know. That's like, true. That's true. Clearly, clearly, I'm I'm not the most well put together in my anti right wing speeches today. But come on, it's like this is just disgusting. It just we it always comes back to a lack of wanting to be informed. Yeah, no, it's it's it utter, utterly dude. Like the you, information's you, there. The internet is like you can literally find anything, you, like well, anything on the internet. You can well, um, I, that also is part of the detriment. But there is so much, you know, positive science and positive blah 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 pl- positive statistics mm-hmm. that are you know ratified and I guess certified as real. But it's just a cho- it's it's just a choice. Well, I mean, let's be real. like for for a lot of a lot of people are just un- like I mean myself included. But like a lot of people are just uneducated when it comes to politics, and you know, yeah. or and like mo- I think it's like seventy percent of voters are single issue voters or something. Mm-hmm. Like that, that so makes sense. If you know, if if the, Re- the Republican Party has done a really good job of just coming across as the workers party and the populist party for the past however many years for a number of reasons that we can't get into now and they just control the narrative like this is utter bullshit like in a sensible society someone like ted nugent would just be laughed off the face of the earth as he goes to you know impregnate his like eighth cousin or whatever (laughs) (laughs) and on that note we might want to jump away from the topic i actually have cuck not not too much news, but I have th- I have things to talk about. Yeah, no, hey, me. you've seen the Zuper mask. What do we think? <laughs> Wait, am I, am the I will I am the will I am oh, Zuper oh. mask. I mean, I think it's kind of based. I honestly think it's pretty cool too. I'm not like, gonna lie. Wrong. I would consider like, getting a pair. I'm not gonna get a pair. It's utterly ridiculous and only for the uber rich. But uh, well, three hundred dollars isn't that expensive. You know, like Adam, that's you just you just got a hundred dollars in the bank account and like cried tears of joy and prayed to your your Buddhist god. Okay. Now I under I understand that someone in my position cannot afford the Zuper mask, but I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. I would I would if someone gave me a Zuper mask as a gift, I I would be I would be over the moon because I mean it's cool a, a mask with wireless headphones and that looks lo- snazzy. It looks bro. snazzy. That, absolutely, dude. You know, it's probably base boosted to shit just because it's a fucking black eyed peas mask, but like, whatever, it's fine. No, um, right? Yeah, it's cool. I don't know. I'd consider looking into it. Pretty cool. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um, I wasn't this. The, I feel like literally nothing happened this week. There's a, a couple of things, just a couple of uh, smaller stories. Um, like, Dan Briggs has a new project, a new jazz project. True. Disorder Assembly. Just pretty cool. Oh, uh, dude! Right <laughs> former Sabaton guitarist Rickard Sundin <laughs> convicted of child pornography and molestation. You know, it's funny that you bring that up, um, especially because um, I don't know. It seems like all these power metal bands are just getting fucked right now. Yeah, dude. Why is it like? Didn't the Manowar guitarist get in for the same shit? Uh, and you know what's funny is he was a guitarist for Sabaton. For 13 years. He was one of the founding members of Sabaton. Jesus, bro. Yeah. Yikes. Um, so, uh, power metal, getting more and more cringe by the day. I say jump on the prog train. The prog train's where it's at. Or just become um, Unleash the Archers. Yeah. True. Dude, we're such plebs. Unleash the Archers are like the biggest band in the world. I know. Um, okay, so speaking of power metal slash heavy metal slash hard rock, I guess. Have you ever heard of the band Lordy? Yeah, of course. You have? They're huge. Okay, well, I hadn't. Um, but this Finnish heavy metal and hard rock band, um, and I this is not a joke. 
are dropping seven albums in October. What? Seven full lengths. Seven. How, bro? I have no idea, but they're dropping seven. Seven full length records in October. I don't even, I don't understand why or how, but there's going to be, they are going to effectively, they have, they currently have uh, 10, no, they, they currently have 11 studio albums. Okay, they're going to basically add an additional third to their catalog um, with this. I don't know. I don't know how the hell you can do that, um, mm-hmm. but I, you know what? Good for them. Their yeah, costumes kind of are stupid. Their, co- their costumes are stupid, though. I think. I think the band. Oh, I, I agree. And their music isn't great. No. Um, uh, bro, do, what do we think about the uh, Run the Jewels Rage Against the Machine reunion tour getting postponed? Um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like everything's getting postponed. Fair. But you know. It is. It is what it is. Uh, Ted Nugent tour canceled. So bullshit. I'm just yeah. I'm, I, I don't I'm, know. I'm crossing my fingers for August so we can see the BT Bammy boys, oh, bro. Dude, dude, I know. Oh, Poppy live stream the 24th. Oh really? Oh yeah, Gojira, Poppy, and Deftones like that too. I don't care how bad the new Gojira album is. I'm seeing them live till the day I die. You know? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, all right. Couple, couple, just a couple more things. Um, did you know? Do you know how many members? Um, armed have? No, Cradle of Filth have had. Twenty three. It's gross. Um, but anyway, um, do you know who N- Nicholas Barker is? Yeah. He played for Cradle of Filth. He played for Bergeria. He played for. Yeah, he's Travis Barker's brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, he played for Demu Borgir too. Um, oh, wow. He he basically said um, uh, most metals and particularly death metal is poo poo. Boo boomer boomer. I mean, kind of a boomer take, but at the same time, I don't know. Dude, let's guys got real. guys got a guys got a rep. Guys got a rep. I mean, it's not it's not it's not Paul Stanley coming over and saying that metal is uh, is not a real genre or not paul stanley gene simmons coming over and saying that <laughs> fuck you. i don't remember what he said well he but said, it, famously it, said rock is dead which he's i wrong. remember i remember rock is dead but um no he said some crazy shit in the last couple of years though um, no i mean let's be real like the vast majority of metal is pretty good i would agree with that um completely and when it's not pretty good it's either bad not very few metals like utterly dog shit or amazing, yeah. and I feel like I hear like three utterly amazing records every week. Mm-hmm. Um, I would agree. Uh, now we have another edition of everyone's favorite uh, music study where we can analyze some metal musicians. And oh their my god, I saw loss. that. Um, we got for big gainers in March: Attila, North Lane. Veil of Maya, Born of Osiris, Insomnium, Entombed, Darkest Hour, and Interarma. And Big Losers. Yeah, can you link me? Yeah. Big Losers, Vola, everyone's semi-favorite, uh, Prog, Gent, whatever the hell. Uh, Cult of Luna, Humanity's Whoa. Last Breath, and Gate and Creeper. Gate Creeper? That's funny. Big, big sad. Since well, all those are better is. than most of the, the fucking... Um, Bands it's before. always so funny to just scroll down and be like, oh, I know, it's these crazy. These artists are bigger than I ever realized, you know? No, seriously, like, I don't, I don't know, like, if I'm going through this and I'm just going to find them the most, the one that sticks out as, like, an underground darling amongst these. And, like, uh, let's see what we got, what we got, what we got, what we got. I mean, Poppy, she's one of the top ones now, at least considerably. Yeah, dude. And Poppy's that's crazy. Huge. Um,. Wait, what? Yeah, it's always bizarre seeing some of the comparisons. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you have, there, this is like one of the few things where you get to see direct comparisons, and you're like, wait, <laughs> Ginger's bigger than Periphery? Yeah. Or like, oh, well, let's see, what's another one? Like, Dark Tranquility has more streams than Unleash the Archers in Code Orange? What? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. it's it, like, even something like 
Oh shit, Suicide Silence has more streams than Veil vale of Maya. Like, I don't know, obviously Suicide Silence is huge, but they're not even that far off with each other. Yeah. And, I don't know, I didn't know that fucking Veil vale of Maya <laughs> It's funny, because you, you, you scroll to the very bottom, and you see all these artists that we consider to be, like, ginormous in the underground. <laughs> yeah, dude, America did them, everyone knows it. Yeah, or, or like, oh, dude, everyone knows, like, horrendous. Yeah. They have, like, seven. Everyone knows horrendous. <laughs> everyone knows Imperial Triumphant. They have, like, 10,000 <laughs> listeners. Right. Oh, son O, huge. 49,000 monthly yeah, listeners. Right. It really, like, it makes you realize that, sure, we're kind of plebs, but our perception is wildly skewed. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, thanks, Internet. Thank you. Um, thanks, 4chan. But, yeah, other than that, I don't have too, too much. Um, well, for releases, we have Kuon. What else? We have Koan. We have the new Zhao record comes out, too. Oh, yeah, dude. People are going bananas for this. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, literally did not know Zhao. Is it, I thought it was Zhao. Zhao, Zhao, whatever. Zhao. I did not know that they were a metalcore band. <laughs> we saw them live. Did, wait, no, we didn't. Yes, they were at the Bannon show. Or the, 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 no, the Caleb's. Yes, they were. They're from Massachusetts, dude. Zhao? No, yes! Not. Yes, they totally are. Hold on. No, you're I losing it, bro. We saw the Cancer Conspiracy, um, Old Man Green. Hold on, hold on, hold Converge. on. Converge. Jabalba 2. No, we did not see Jabalba. No way. There are two, uh, there's a, there's Zabalba I know that there, uh, and Jabalba. Alright, hold on. Um. Uh, ba, 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 ba. By the way, it's it's been years, but ripped Caleb Schofield. Dude, ripped Caleb, bro. Um, yeah, they're from Pennsylvania, bro. All right, yeah, I know, but hold on. And we did not gotta... see them there. Dude, I swear. No, I I, I, remember, I remember. I swear the, to pee pee. I told you. I just told you the lineup. It was Cancer Conspiracy, Old Man Gloom, Converge, Caven, and Jabalba. Well, call me. A stupid dummy, because I'm a stupid dummy. Um, I'm a stu dummy. That's Adam, bro. Well, regardless, new Zhao record's gonna be... I don't know, probably pretty interesting. Probably Yeah, people decent. are really liking it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm pumped for the Kawan record, dude. I'm, I've, I've oh, never been too. more ready. I've never been more ready for a record. It's um, always funny when you realize that, like, all these in somewhat independent artists... Like, Kawan are pretty big now, but, you know, they have, like, 15 albums or whatever. <laughs> Seriously, they've had a ton of releases. And they're still on metal, even though they arguably shouldn't be. Well, this new record's pretty doomy. True. Their older stuff's obviously very doomy. Very, very doomy. Black, I didn't realize that Nor Lorny Now was, like, pretty melodic. I thought it was a lot harsher than I remember. No. Yeah. No. All right. It was mm -hmm. a lot. Sorry. When I, in my memory, it was a lot harsher. Right. Oh, well, I mean, I, literally anything else, like, I feel like nothing's Honestly, dude, harsher. that's, that's kind of it. This week is very dry. Um, I mean, we've had a banger couple of weeks, so I'm okay with the slowdown for right now. Um, I just... Let me see if there's anything on my sheet that I'm missing. Because there could be certainly some stuff uh, that I'm not going through. Um, there's apparently a record from a group called Soothsayer coming out tomorrow. I don't know who they are exactly, unless I see an album cover, because God forbid I... Soothsayer. Oh, it's a debut um, on Transcending Obscurity. And then we got... What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Um, uh, the new Throne record is coming out. People have kind of been going ape about that. Um, oh, hey, the Portsmouth Tech Tech album came out last week. Unflesh. Bruh. Bruh. Um, oh, unflesh? Unflesh. Yeah, yeah. people... Yeah. They, this is like people an actual like that record. record. It's an actual record. Yeah. Yeah, it's on RYM. It's on RYM. It's uh, Invisible Orange just did a um, spotlight of it. Yeah. Damn, bro. Portsmouth rep. Yeah, Portsmouth rep. Maybe so, I'll go, like, go walk to Portsmouth today. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, uh, new Paysage Diver record. You're joking. <laughs> nope. April 23rd. Jesus Christ. Yep. It's, it's Jason called Bourne. Geister. It's an hour like and ten record? minutes long. Record, record, dude. Jeez. Hour and ten minutes. All right, dude. Forget what I've been... Oh, yeah. They released Schnee Intro. Yeah. 
There's a couple of singles. You got Asha, you blew it, and um, uh, I think they just released another single too. Yeah, dude, what? Yeah. They released two EPs and then Geister's the full length. Um, well, they released Imtrom, which mm -hmm. is just, uh, it's an EP. Oh, and then Schneezer re release. Uh, yes. But Geister's a full, is this new material? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Jesus Christ, bro. Man doesn't sleep. Vintar does not sleep. <laughs> Sorry, I was just about to do my my best winter, winter impression and say like winter eight times. Like, so I'm like, winter, 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 winter. Um. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Right. Now that album's a good. No. Um. But yeah, I don't know. This has been uh yeah the the, the PM the PM the PM Metal Guide podcast. Uh. Opeth will, I don't know if we'll be back next week. We might take a break. Um, who knows? If not, there will certainly be a review. You can read the reviews. <laughs> they, hey, the people, hey, yeah, you know what? People do still read the reviews. They they do. They do. And you know what? We we even get some artist interaction. Some likes from the, the Juju label. Some likes from... Yeah, they're on polyvinyl, right? <laughs> they are on polyvinyl, which is very strange, but they are. Um, I don't know. She's a pop band, bro. Check out, check out, the, check out the blog. PMMetalGuide.blogspot.com You're already listening to the podcast. You're already at the end of the podcast. You clearly give a shit about we ha what we have to say. You might as well read it. The, um, the one poor individual... <gasps> That's every, 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 I don't know. I'm signing off. Okay, sign off. Alright, thanks for listening. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, uh, Sam, and... Adam, it's true. Don't, don't you forever. say forever. We're gonna, we're gonna get copyright corrected.